attention. Extend to the left. March. Arms downward. Move. Left. Heath. Extend to the left. March. Arms downward. Move. Right. Face. From front to rear, count all. Even numbers, one step to the left, uncover. All right, hopefully that was flashback inducing for those of you that served. This video was a request from a patron. Never served in the military, and he wants some ideas and some help on this subject. Physical fitness, PT, physical training. So I'll give you a little bit of information on this. Now, the manual I really recommend you look for is FM 21-20 Physical Fitness Training from the 1990s. There is a newer version of the manual that is out there. FM 7-22 Holistic Health and Fitness. I just looked at it and I think it's garbage. It shows very damn little on what to actually do for physical fitness. It gives you tons of information on nutrition, but it tells you absolutely dick on how to get ready physically for the rigors of a combat environment and the stresses your body's gonna have to go through and it's gonna have to endure. So look for, you can find PDFs online, FM Field Manual 21-20 Physical Fitness Training. Now there is also another little guide here that we got passed out about 20 years ago. Pocket Physical Training Guide. This was passed out in 2004. The publication number on it is looks like RPI 237. Squad leaders were literally given like a box of these each. So all of us ended up with a large number of them. So there should be plenty of them floating around out there on the surplus market. There's a lot of good information in here that will help you with setting up your physical training program. Now I wrote some things down and we'll go through it. Now when you're planning your workouts and stuff, you're planning for primarily three areas. Your legs, and you handle strengthening those areas, walking, running, and ruck marching. Your core, which is this area here, you primarily strengthen that with sit-ups and crunchies. And when you do that, don't forget your obliques, the sides. A lot of people forget that. They only do the sit-ups. They're only working on doing nets. Well, you leave this week over here and you can get seriously messed up then. So don't forget to do those uh, oblique sit-ups also. And then we have our upper body. Everything chest up in here, your upper back, okay? Your lower back, that falls in your core area. When you work on this here, you're working on this here. So your upper body, really the only way to get good at that is weight type training. What you're trying to do, you're trying to improve your strength, your speed, and what I always consider the most important, your endurance. I don't give a fuck if a soldier can lift 300 goddamn pounds 10 reps and he's not able to lift 100 pounds for 300 reps. I need someone who can endure, who can keep going. And that's what this country needs too when the fight comes. 
Now, as Cavs like to coin the term, Mule Team 6, you know, I'm definitely on a member of a Meal Team 6 category. You know, my uh, combat weight is about 60 pounds ago. And my uh, combat body disappeared almost, you know, 15 years ago. You know, I started letting it go even before I retired. So, but... Okay, pick yourself up off the floor, combat cameraman. Stop laughing. It's not funny. Fatty's touchy about his weight. Alright, now, all you fatties out there, you know, put down that fat tablet, set aside those pork rinds, stop doing those 12 ounce curls, listen up. All right, I have some ideas here to help you out for planning your workouts. Some of this is based off some of the workouts I used to do and I scaled them down. And quite frankly, I know I would have trouble even doing these scaled down workouts myself now. But for everyone, the easiest to start out with on your legs is just basically walking. And I recommend test yourself first find out what your baseline is and when you do your test do it maybe two or three times to find out what your average is what should be your test that's going to be up to you i would say see how long it takes you to walk at a decent speed that you can handle one mile or five miles it depends on your fitness all right if you're in the elite of meal team six you know you're pushing three bills do that one miler okay if you're down around two bills try walking five miles timed nothing on your back make sure to stretch before you do it time yourself from when you take that first step to you cross that finish line hit the stop on your watch that's your baseline, that's your start point. Once you get that, figure out how much you want to improve. Do you want to improve your distance? You want to improve your time? Set yourself a little goal first. Now, a basic little program you can do if you're starting out pretty much cold is do either a quarter mile or a half mile. No pack and time yourself. Do that for a few weeks till you meet your goal, till you can reach that quarter mile or that half mile mark in the time that you set yourself. Then bump it up to a half mile or one mile. Same thing, no pack, time yourself. Do this on average of two to three times per week. When you reach your goal at that one mile mark, start adding a half mile every week to two weeks. Until you reach your goal of two and a half miles, continuous, straight, no stops, or five miles, continuous, straight, no stops. Remember, this is without a rucksack or any weight on your body. Now, once you get really good at that, Throw a ruck on your back and do it light first, okay? Light, I mean 20 pounds, okay? Don't toss that 50 pounder on your back. <coughs> and then, you know, go from your uh, five mile mark, bump it up to doing six miles, then seven miles, eight miles. Work yourself up to 10. Now, the longer distance stuff, only do that once a week. Okay, so if you're doing ruck marches and real walks, maybe have like one day a week you're going to walk that five miles or one day a week you'll walk that ten miles. And then the rest of the week you're going to do two and a half or three. Or five if you're doing a ten miler as your long one. 
And as you add distance onto your legs, how far you're going that you can handle without stopping, start adding some weight to your rucksack. Add another 5 pounds or 10 pounds depending on your physical condition. Well, what should be the maximum you should go to? I'd say go to your expected combat packing weight with at least 10%. What I used to do when I was in, I used to carry a 60 pound rucksack and then when I was doing my real endurance ruck marches on my own, I would toss my body armor on top. Or if I got really froggy, go find a sandbag and strap that to the top of my fully loaded rucksack. If you can handle that to that full distance in the time that you're shooting for, you'll be able to handle your combat load easily when you need to. Now for running, and I do suggest you do this at least once a week even if you are starting out with walking. Now your running might be more of a slow jog, but at least get it in there. And when you're running, remember to use running shoes. Do not do it in boots. Do not do it in tennis shoes. Do not do it in hiking shoes. Get yourself a decent pair of running shoes. They don't have to be super expensive. You can still get them for under 30, 40 bucks easy. I doubt we'll be able to find them under 20 like we used to everywhere. I personally haven't bought a new pair of running shoes in at least five years. So I'm not sure what the current price is. But when you're doing running, start out with a half mile. Have your set time on what you want to do that half mile in without stopping. No breaks. Well, then bump it up to one mile. Then a mile and a half, then two miles. You know, make, set yourself an ultimate goal of two to three miles with a fairly quick time, something for you to shoot for, something for you to work for. Now something you can add in on your runs to build up your endurance is a little thing called Indian runs or last man up, but you're probably going to be doing it by yourself. So what I used to do if I was at a track, I would do it, I would come around the corner, get on the straightaway, and I would do that break of a sprint for at least half of that straightaway. I would find myself a marker somewhere along there that would be my point. Sprint to that marker and then go back to the jock. Get up to that corner and then sprint at least half of that, that loop. And then just keep alternating going all the way around that track. If I found, you know, there was one really good nature trail I used to do this on, there wasn't that many ruts and stuff. I used to do it based on the turns in the trail. I would get to one turn, sprint the quarter mile or whatever it is to the next turn because it was a nice flat straightaway area. Then get, it would start to loop up and turn, go down to the jog, get up on that till I got to the next straightaway and then sprint. That's a way to modify that interval run. Now, while you're also working on your legs, do not forget leg strengthening exercises. Things like squats. And you can do squats holding weights, like those uh, kettlebell weights, or ammo cans. Vary the weight in the can. Remember, you have to have two of them, one for each hand that are the same weight. So that you're going down, hold, up. Down, hold, up. And that weight needs to be even between those two cans or whatever weight you're doing. There is tons of exercise videos out there, tons of exercise programs. Find the exercises that work for you, that helps you reach your goal. Now, core and upper body. For this one, you know, some of the things you can do. 
push-ups, and there's lots of different ways of doing push-ups. Sit-ups, and there's tons of variations on sit-ups. Pull-ups, I fucking hate the goddamn things. You have to have a bar to do it. Not all of us have that available. Dips. Dips was one you could do anywhere. A dip was simple. We would go to, say, a picnic table or something like that. You got the seat that's down. Go up to it, arms on the seat, kick your legs out so that they're at an angle. Your body is straight up and down. You would lower yourself. The number of repetitions you're shooting for for that workout. Your body is the weight. Obviously, weight training, you can get weights anywhere. You can go to a gym, there's weight machines. I did that for a while too. And another thing is rifle PT, which I will get to. I will show you some exercises. Now, just like with running or walking, give yourself a test when you first start out. See how many push-ups, how many sit-ups you can do in one or two minutes, depending on your physical fitness, all right? If you're part of the elite of meal team six, do that one minute, okay? If you're down uh, closer to an actual healthy weight, do it for two minutes. See how many correct repetitions you can do. If you can get a second person to watch you, to do the counting for you, to tell you when you're not doing the repetition correctly, hey, go for it. Take that number, that's your baseline. That's where you're starting out at. Set yourself your goal and then build up to it. Now, for pull-ups, that's not timed. That's how many complete repetitions you can pull yourself up above the bar, back down, back up. That's not timed. Now, one of the things I always did with upper body and core I used to do what are called pyramids. Start with a low number, work up to a high number, and then back down to the low number. Now, I got an example here. First do 10 repetitions, then 15, then 25, then 25, 15, and 10. That gives you 100 reps. Another way you can do it, if you're uh, not a, an elite Meal Team 6 member, you can do 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, then 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. That gives you 200 repetitions. Now, when that becomes easy for you, you can knock that out quick, fast, no problems. Add another 50 repetitions in there somehow. And then you just keep building up, building up, building up. When I was ready for combat, went over and all that, came back, I was able to do pyramids of a total of 500 quick like it was nothing. Now, I probably would be pushing kind of hard to hit the 100. Now for pull-ups, all I can recommend on that is, you know, do smaller sets. You're not going to be able to do 100, maybe just try doing 1 and 2, you know, up to 5 and then back down. Something like that, what you're able to handle. And then as you get better, add more repetitions into there. Now how a workout should be laid out. First thing you do is a warm-up. Your warm-up, you know, usually was jogging in place. You know, the whole stupid, you see people standing there, jogging up and down. What you're doing is you're moving your muscles. You're getting the blood to circulate through your system. Try to get lactic acid and whatever crap is in there out before you move into stretching. When you move into stretching, 
hold your stretches for between 10 to 30 seconds. Depends on the workout. And also, is it before or after? After the workout, you do longer stretches typically. But 10 to 15 seconds is usually a good mark for holding a stretch. And remember, stretch everything. You're working on your abs, you got to stretch your abdominals, you got to stretch your obliques, you got to stretch your back, otherwise you can hurt it. When you're, stre you're doing upper body, chest stretches, upper back, front of the arm, back of the arm, forearms, and don't forget wrist. Wrist exercise is pretty simple, just doing that for stretching, and then you hold it for your 10 or 15 seconds, and then down 10 or 15 seconds. Remember both hands. Always hold it the same count on your stretches. Now, legs, pretty simple. Thighs, groin, do not forget to groin stretch. Trust me, I did that once and it fucking hurts like a motherfucker when you do. Your calves, your hamstrings, your ankles. Now, when you get into your actual workout, plan for 30 to 60 minutes. And you'll notice over time, as you improve, the length of time for your workouts will decrease because your body's getting used to it. It's building up. It's improving. You're improving your strength and your speed. You improve your endurance by adding additional distance and repetitions. After you do your workout, you have to do your cool down. Do your stretches again. Usually you do them for about twice the amount of time that you did your initial batch of stretches. And then for cool down, it's just, you know, simple stuff. If you went out for a run in that stuff, the thing we used to do was just walk around, hands above your head, let that blood just flow back down into your body and stuff. Everything kind of equalized, keep moving, because if you stop and you stop quick, well, what will happen? All the blood's going to rush right out of your head down into your body and you're going to hit the goddamn ground. And even if you stay conscious, your goddamn legs will tighten up. So keep moving around before you do those final stretches. Now, rifle PT. And I did uh, have to print out the page from the manual on this because I didn't remember the names on some of these exercises. And I know I did some exercises that are not even listed in here. First one will be up and forward is what they call it. So you're going to need a rifle. Most of you probably got this. Guess what? This is, this is a fucking paper clip. Okay? You want a paper weight. Grab out that big boy, got some heft to it, and use that for your rifle PT. Now, if you're one of the super elite of Meal Team 6, yeah, start out with your carbine and then build your way up. Now, if you got balls the size of grapefruits, you know, and you're already a fucking Mr. Olympus, yeah, go get yourself a Barrett 50 cal and uh, do it with that. But, uh, all right, we got up and forward to start. Hold rifle downward and put feet together. Now, rifle PT is typically a four count exercise. This is count one. Or actually, this is a, your, actually your count four, your start point. So, up and forward. In cadence, 
One, all the way over the head. Two, straight out in front. Three, oh, no, nope, fuck that up. God damn it. Yes, it's been a long time since I've done this. So, one, two, three, one full repetition. One, two, three, one complete repetition. How does this look at combat speed? One, two, three, one, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five. How many reps? U.S. military says do it in sets of 10. I don't know. When I was in, we were doing a minimum of sets of 25. And I remember a few times we went up to sets of 100. Yes, that seriously sucks. Now, next one. Four up and squat. Hold rifle downward. Feet shoulder width apart. All right, so start position, feet shoulder width apart. One, two, three, one repetition. One, two, three, one repetition. Combat speed. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Five repetitions. All right. This next one is four up behind back. Feet together. This one I will have to do uh, from the side. Count one. Count two behind the back. Count three. Count four. One, two, three. One repetition. One, two, three. One repetition. <coughs> now, if combat cameraman can make sure to show my uh, shoulders and stuff with this one for when the rifle goes up. <sighs> Exercise. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, five. This next one, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to do it right. Just because of the number of times I've injured my back. But this one is the four up back bend. Still four count exercise. It says feet together. So, start position, feet together, count one, straight up over your head, two, lean back, three, back straight, one, one, two, three, repetition. It says lean back but not to an angle where you lose your balance or you hurt yourself. Feet together. One, two, three, two. One, one, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, five. Now this next one, you're not going to find in the manual, 
But it's a favorite one in basic training. I know, I did plenty of them. And when I did it, fucking drill sergeants made me do it with an M60. I was fucking built up here back then. Next exercise will be the motherfucker. Or some people might call it side by side. Straight up in front of you, both hands on the foregrip above the magazine well. First count, one, two, three, one. One, two, three. That's complete repetition, so that's two reps. So how does this look? Combat speed. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, five. Trust me, you do those 25 or 50 times, smokes the hell out of your upper body. Keep that rifle straight up and down at all times. Do not angle it. You're not trying to whip it out and nail the person next to you. Straight up and down. Straight up and down. U.S. military recommends rifle PT should be done in a field. So when you're out there on your field exercises, training with your defense group, well, early in the morning, everyone's waking up, haven't had chow yet, your mess team is working on it, or whoever's been detailed for it for today. Have everyone else strip down, pants, t-shirt, Get those rifles out. Do some rifle PT. Do some sprints, some laps around your training area. Mix it up. Now, what should a PT plan look like? Usually plan for five to six days because you want one to two days of rest in your PT plan. Figure Three days working on your core upper body, two days running or walking or ruck marching. Then two days resting. The next week, switch it up. Three days running, walking or ruck marching, two days upper body and core. Just keep alternating. Set yourself some goals. Well, what's realistic? What's realistic to you? And remember, when you're doing this too, you're trying to get rid of this. Get rid of some of this excess shit down here, which cuts into how much ammo you can carry. Now, granted, this is great uh, storage for uh, hard economic times. But in combat, this can get you killed because you can't move fast enough, can't move far enough. Endurance should be at the top of your list. Now you can vary your exercises, vary your workouts. Okay, you don't, it gets real boring doing the same thing all the goddamn time. There's different types of exercises out there for each muscle group, and you can change it up. I had one unit I was in, we would do two company runs a week, and then we had three days that were platoon PT. One of those days was squad PT, and my squad leader used to mess us up, take us down to the uh, motor pool, doing weight training with track shoes, which are not light. Going for run, 
He would send us up into barracks, get our body armor. Put our body armor on. Go for a little run around post. And then to alternate, maybe the next time it was a run day, instead of grabbing body armor, he had us get, grab our pro masks, our gas masks. Yeah, it was not a really fast run. And you were gasping through the whole damn thing. But your lung capacity seriously improved doing it. We didn't run as far as fast. You know, you don't push yourself to the point you're going to pass out when your people pass out. But, you know, you know what to watch for on your people. When it looks like people are starting to stagger too much, that's when we would stop. Hey, take the masks off, breathe. Put them back on, continue on. Get the idea? These are just some ideas. Like I said, there's tons of different ways of doing this out there. This is more of the military method. If you want the civilian method, you know, the Jane Fonda workout or whatever, fine. Whatever works for you. Just get your ass up off the fucking couch and work out. Because guess what? Those people that are going to be on the other end of the two-way rifle range, they're going to be in shape. I guarantee they're stronger than you, they're faster than you, and they can last a hell of a lot longer. So work on it. And start now. Hopefully this answers uh, all your questions there, uh, patron. I'm not going to give your name. For all my engineer brothers and patriot militia movements, always remember, that's seance.